uh, stuff we're doing internally in jQuery. Um, so I just want to emphasize this is going to be an advanced talk. Uh, if you don't feel confident using jQuery yet, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Carl's doing an excellent talk uh, on that. Um, so this says a warning. Um, okay. So there's a couple things I wanted to talk about. There, I wanted to talk about uh, some of the things in jQuery uh, and explain why we do things the way we do them. Um, uh, there, there's some specific things that make us very different from other libraries, and I just want to explain that. Uh, I wanted to show some, some features in jQuery that you might not know about. Uh, there's probably a bunch, especially ones that came out in the last year or so. And I also wanted to talk about some of the new features that are going to come in jQuery. As uh, one of the things. So. Okay, so there's quite a few parts of jQuery that I wanted to talk about. Uh, this is roughly the breakdown. So there's one thing that I feel like people don't uh, know enough about. Or, uh, I mean, most people, at least I assume here, are familiar with, with uh, training in jQuery. Being able to do a function on top of another function uh, and call them on the go. But uh, I, I don't see it too much, but one thing that you can do with jQuery is you can start to do these incredibly elaborate uh, chain sequences. Where, um, so, so as an example, so the, the top one here, uh, so I just, how many people have seen being able to put HTML into a jQuery selector? Okay, so much. All right, that's one All right, so, um, well, because when you pass the HTML, like, you get that. Uh, a DOM uh, object representing the HTML. And then what you can do is you can start to traverse against uh, the, the methods and, sorry, traverse against the DOM using the different measure methods and chaining these. And so in this way, you can start to do uh, some different forms of uh, object or, and DOM construction. One method that we have uh, here in, in jQuery is called uh, ansolve. We added that uh, within the last year or so. And ansolve allows you to, so let me show you here. Because what's happening here is, is that we, from this, we get back an LI. From this, we get back uh, an anchor. An anchor. <coughs> but then from ansolve, we get back an LI and an anchor. And so what ansolve does is it, is it merges what we were currently looking at with what we had just previously retrieved. So, uh, uh, so uh, it, it takes both and, and just combines them together into a single uh, statement. And, and from there, so now when we do add person, it's, add, it's, it's adding the class to both uh, the LI and the anchor. And then again, when we pop back out again, we're back to it. Yeah. Back to an LI. And then so eventually we append the LI to the document. So I just want to show that a little bit. So in jQuery, one thing that we're pretty good at um, is isolation. So jQuery itself is. Um, uh, right now, we, we're, we're pretty good at being uh, uh, sure not to affect code outside. So, I mean, if you can, if you introduce jQuery into a page, it's a pretty good bet that you, it won't break anything. Uh, I mean, there's there's always cases, but I mean, but the, for the most part, we're pretty good here. Um, the other thing that we're working on trying to get better at is that outside code should come and affect jQuery. So, right now, uh, the one area where we kind of fall off on this, and we're, we're trying to work on it. It's going to be hard, but uh, we're now getting hurt by people extend the native object prototype. Uh, most people don't do this in web pages. Uh, I know of a couple of websites that do. MyJournal is one of them. Oh, damn, the, the, it's a, what happens is, is that uh, people start to use jQuery, and one area is to build a Firefox extension that takes jQuery and injects it into the page. Um, and this will work on all pages except for hey, live journal it breaks. Uh, so yeah, this is something we're trying to get better at. Another thing we do in jQuery is uh, to make sure we're isolated is uh, this concept of a, a wrapper function. Um, and what this is, uh, this, oh, I want to break it down here really quick. Oh, okay, just as a show of hands, how many people here have seen, I guess, this thing? Good show. How many people here feel like they understand it? Okay. Um, so I just, I just want to show you what's happening here. It, it, it's uh, pretty briefly. All right. So you, you know how to call a function. We'll have you know, um, 
some function, and you call it with if the parentheses on the end. That, 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 that makes good sense. What's also valid is that you can wrap parentheses around uh, the function itself. And what, what, this is, what this is doing is saying, you know, whatever, whatever's inside of here, uh, we're going to try and execute that other function. So, I mean, this, this, could be, this could be anything. This could be, um, you know, a, a statement of some sort uh, that, that would still be valid. It'd be weird, but it'd still be valid. Um, so, so, you know, that, 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 that's not an option. So, if we take, so what, what if we did some function equals uh, an anonymous function? And so it, it, it's also, again, we can go back and recess some function. Okay. So that, that's also valid. But what, what, again, what, what, so we can start to just remove the, the individual pieces. We can remove the anonymous function. Put that in there. So what, <coughs> what the result is, is we, we, we are creating a function in, uh, just instantly. Um, instantly executing the contents of that function, and then it all just disappears. Uh, so, so for example, if we have here um, uh, plus four, the, and I don't know, let's say we did an uh, alert. So this would run, it would alert nine, and it would, it would just be gone. So there, the, the important thing here is that in this case, foo wouldn't be a global object. It would be confined to within this function. So this, this technique is an efficient way of keeping uh, the variables and functions that you define enclosed into a particular area. And this is what we do with jQuery. <coughs> we wrap all of jQuery in one of these statements. So that way, when we go through jQuery, <coughs> you'll, you'll see a variable is being defined, but they aren't being defined globally. They're only being defined within this scope of the library. So that way, we're able to keep things nice and tidy and it's really efficient. So one of the things we do now is that, uh, note that I said that it doesn't become a global variable. So what we have to do is we have to explicitly make jQuery a global variable. So we have this convoluted uh, statement here. It does two things. We have the, the var jQuery part, which is uh, <coughs> defining jQuery within our encapsulation. So it, it, for us, it's named jQuery. And then we explicitly set, so the window is the global object, we explicitly set the jQuery name outside of the global object. So, the, the, you know, so the, the, we're doing two folks. We're making sure that it's named jQuery for us, while at the same time we're introducing it outside. The next, uh, but the, the next step is, so we, we do this explicitly because we want to be able to have this work. So this is, uh, this is the no conflict method. I, people who use jQuery and let's say prototype simultaneously are very familiar with this method. And what it, what it effectively does is that since we explicitly introduce uh, the, the variables jQuery, the variable dollar sign, into the global namespace, <coughs> we can then later on uh, revert that back out. And that's what no conflict does. It, it, it pulls those back out of the global namespace so, so that there's no more conflict between jQuery and whatever else out there. So calling no conflict with no, uh, no properties uh, just pulls the dollar sign back. That's the most common conflict within the um, prototype, new tools, et cetera. Um, and then the second one, uh, true, not only does that pull back dollar sign, but it also pulls back jQuery itself. Now, theoretically, it, it, so if, if you ran this on a page, it is essentially it self-deletes jQuery. Right? Uh, I think, in my opinion, that is the, the optimal uh, state of a library. A library should be able to, to delete itself on a page. Um, but what this affords us is that you can introduce jQuery to a page, one that's no conflict true, and you can have multiple copies of jQuery on the page running simultaneously. And so again, it allows, uh, what I mentioned before about extensions being able to inject into a page, you can do that. So I just want to show you roughly how it works. It's, it's not the exact code, but uh, so again, we have this thing where we're, we're introducing jQuery. So var jQuery equals window jQuery equals function. But before we assign to that, we save a reference. So in the whole jQuery, we save a reference to the one that we might be overwriting. We don't know if we're actually overwriting anything. But we save a copy, to, uh, we save a reference to that later. And then later on, in the no conflict, uh, if the user wants to revert, we just flip it back to what they had previously. So again, it, it ends up being uh, a pretty 